Hey guys, Will from EDM Tips here. Today I'm going to show you my four techniques for sidechain compression. Now these are the same techniques I've used to make EDM which has topped the charts at Track It Down and Beatport and Juno and also to help produce a track that was nominated for the dance section of the Grammys. So I'm going to show you these four techniques in Ableton Live but they work in any single door and I'm also at the end going to show you which one is my favourite and tell you exactly why. Thanks for subscribing, don't forget to download the free gift below and let's hop into the door and get it done. So technique one is the dedicated sidechain trigger track. So we have our bass line here. And if we play it with our kick drum, we can hear that they clash slightly and kind of mask each other. So this is what happens when we put our sidechain compression on. So first I'll play it off and then I'll switch it on. So it just gives the kick drum more space. And the way we do it with the dedicated sidechain trigger track is to program in a instrument and I prefer a very short sharp tick, like I use a rim shot actually. Um, so I will just show you what that sounds like. So what you do is you program in the pattern of the sidechain trigger that you want. Usually it would be a 4-4 beat, but if you're doing a future bass track, you'd usually program in your sidechain triggers to hit at the same time that your kicks would. So we create a MIDI channel. Uh, we route the audio to sends only, so we can't actually hear the sidechain. So let's look at it now. We can't actually hear that rim shot, but it's being sent through the system so we can access it through the send controls. So now if we open up a compressor, just a standard Ableton compressor on our bass track. And then open up this control here, which is a sidechain control. Click it on, input from SC, which is my sidechain track. As you can see, I've named it SC. And now the tick from this sidechain track is going to compress the bass line. So the way we do that is take the threshold right down to zero, take the attack down as fast as it will go, and put the ratio right up. And then we start working up that release time until we get the pump in the correct rhythm that we want for the rest of our track. We can see the gain reduction here that's happening from the tick on our sidechain channel. And what we want is for this gain reduction to get right up to zero between every pump. Otherwise, the bass line or whichever track we're sidechaining doesn't ever reach its full volume. So unless the gain reduction hits zero each time, we're just reducing the volume of that track. Like, that's too much, see? And that's too little because the kick drum doesn't have time to breathe through. But here we can see the gain reduction is reaching zero. It sounds in rhythm with our track. Bosh, that's done. And if you want less or more side chain effect, you can either use the dry wet knob or the ratio knob. Because you might not want it to reach complete silence every time the kick hits. So that is technique one. Technique two is to trigger the sidechain compression from the kick itself. Now some people prefer to do this because they argue quite rightly that every kick has a different waveform. So if you trigger it from the kick itself rather than a tick, which is what I was doing, then the sidechain compression is going to meld together and the shape is going to be more harmonious. But obviously kick drums are a lot longer than a very sharp tick. So the release time is going to end up being set a lot lower, which is fine if that's what you want. So you can see the kick here is reducing the gain for a much longer period of time because our kick is a much longer signal than our short rim shot.
Okay, technique three is to use plugins like the Exfer LFO tool or the Nicky Romero, I think it's called Kickstarter, something like that. I've put links to them both below this video. So how that works is instead of a compressor, you've actually just got a plugin which is in effect a volume automation that is synced to the tempo of your track. So let's get that to a 4-4 beat. Make sure that the volume is being automated rather than the panning or anything else. And then adjust the shape of the curve to your liking. So this is on and off. And the fourth and final option is to do it manually by automating the level of your track. So we'll take the LFO tool off. We've got a utility plugin, but whichever door you're using will have a similar level plugin, level control. And then it's a case of actually doing it manually with the volume. Now it's important not to do this with the fader control for the track, but with a utility plugin or similar, because then if you want to adjust the levels in the mix, you're gonna to have to move all the automation on your level fader, and we don't wanna be doing that because it's a massive pain. Now this gives you the most control, but it's very painstaking, so I don't recommend it. Now my favorite option out of all of those is number one, which is to use a dedicated sidechain track. Now this is because you don't have to follow the exact rhythm of your kick mainly. So if your kick has a little pattern at the end of a bar, for instance, like this. So it goes. I don't want my sidechain trigger to follow that pattern. I want it to keep on the 4-4 beat. So that is why having a separate sidechain channel allows me to keep that 4-4 beat even though the kick drum changes pattern. See, so my side chain continues in the same pattern. The other bonus is that you can turn off the side chain trigger very easily just by deleting the side chain track in a break, for instance, if you don't want that pumping effect. So let's have a listen to what I mean by that. So no side chain pump, but when the beats come in, that's when I want it to hit. And then we've got that pump going. So that is why I prefer the separate side chain trigger track. But again, it's a complete preference. It's just what works best for you. So have a play, experiment, and find out what you like best. Now the last option, which is a manual automation like this, is really great when we're trying to get things as loud as possible when we're creating our mix down for the final mastering stage. Now I'm not gonna cover that today, but if you've taken my ultimate EDM mixing course, then we cover that in that course. There are also another whole bunch of more advanced sidechain tricks which we cover in that course, which help you do things like clear up room in the mix, reduce mud, and help things really cut through and gain clarity in the mix. So if you wanna find out more about my course, you can check the link below this video. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until next time, cheers and happy producing.